So again, so we have reached the question seven, which is the factorial of a positive number. So we know how to calculate the factorial of a positive number. So let's take an example. If I have a three factorial, it's equal to three multiple two, a multiple one, and I will get the answer. So uh, obviously there is no factorial for negative numbers. So uh, you can uh, uh, just uh, consider that the function uh, factorial uh, it takes a number and it should be positive. You can uh, write a do while uh, in the main or in the test function in order to uh, be sure that the user doesn't enter a negative number. So we'll don't do that because we already done that in, in loops. So we just work in doing the function. So obviously it will take a, a, an integer and it, it will return a big number. So because uh, uh, the factorial is a multiplication, so the number grows uh, very quickly. So we will just uh, uh, say now that the numbers are small. So instead of integer, you can use double. For example, if you know that the number will be the, the one in the question, the user will enter a, a, a number for n for the factorial, which is very big. So we will settle just for, for int. So we have here int n, and so we know how to do that. I need to calculate the multiplication. So I have a variable called mult, and if I have n equal to three, I need to loop uh, from one to three. So it's very easy. So I need an integer i, and I will do for i equal to one. So I can skip one two uh, also because I will not. There's no need to multiply by uh, two. So and as long as uh, uh, so I can loop i less than or equal to n i plus plus and i have here the answer which is called fact and it will start from one because it's a multiplication and i will do factorial is equal uh, multiple of i and of course i will return i so it's it's an easy uh, factorial sorry so it's an easy exercise i will do that however uh, i will uh, just rewrite it in a different way because here we have uh, used two variables i and fact we can just use one variable because we have the variable n and we didn't modify it however can we can modify it for example n first it's equal to three then equal to two then equal to one for for now i will just uh, uh, try to test it so uh, the, uh, the user should enter a number it, it should be positive uh, so we can uh, place the printf and scanf into a do while so enter a number and scanf percentage d address of n and uh, then we uh, will call uh, the fact so printf uh, here we have percentage d factorial is equal to percentage d because the function returns an integer. The first one is n and the second one is fact of n. So again, uh, the n in the main is different than the n in the factorial. Those are two different functions and each one have its own local variable. So let's run it and let's say we enter the number 3. So 3 factorial is equal to 6. So this is easy. So uh, let's uh, just uh, rectify this because as I have told you, we have n and we can manipulate n. So first n is equal to 3. I can use it to do n minus minus in order to, uh, uh, to be equal to 2. So for that, I will remove uh, 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 i. So there's no need for i here. And I will work on n. So at each time, I will uh, decrement n. And in the factorial, I will multiply n. So I will do that as long as n is greater than 1. Because if it reaches 0, because each time I'm decrementing it, I will have a 0 here. So let's rerun this and see if it works. So 3 factorial is equal to 6. So we have used n here. It's a, it's a nice trick because n is a local variable to factorial. And I can modify it. And if I modify n here, it's not related to the n in the main because we have copied it into the factorial function so first we have three and then we have done n minus minus two and then we have made the n minus minus equal to one so whenever i reach a, a, a number which is equal to one so look here the condition is the negation of n greater to one is n is less or equal to one so whenever it equals one i will end the calculation so this is it for the factorial however let's uh, try to write it recursively so we know that a number for example if it's equal to three factorial it's equal to three multiple two factorial so it's very easy now to see how we can write the recursive function so i just i'm talking here just a bit in order to let you uh, figure uh, what uh, how can we write this and however we need to check the stepping condition so 
obviously we know uh, uh, some uh, uh, known factorial for example no one knows for example what's the answer of 5 factorial or 123 factorial however everybody knows that one factorial is equal to one or maybe zero factorial again is equal uh, to one so as you have seen here we are if you are calculating a number like three factorial i will uh, return a three multiple the factorial of n minus one so n it will uh, each time it will be decremented so it will either either reach one or it will either reach a zero so since we are dealing with positive number we can just uh, 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 deal with uh, with that. So before that, I just uh, want to run a program with n b equal to zero because it's very interesting to check the limit cases. So if uh, zero, it will return one. So this uh, iterative uh, function it works also for zero factorial. So in the recursive part, I need also to be sure that zero factorials works. So let's call it fact recursive. And again, so it should have the same prototype. So we just need to change the name, uh, the function name. So what's the stopping condition? So I can uh, uh, check if n is equal equal to 1 and I will return 1. However, as you can see, it will not work for 0. So we'll check that in a while. Otherwise, I will return n, which is equal to 3, multiple the factorial of 2, factorial recursive of n minus 1. So let's check this uh, for 3 factorial. So it will work. So what happens if I enter 0 now? 0, it's not equal to 1. So it will return 0 multiple factorial of minus 1. So factorial of minus 1, it's, so minus 1 is not equal to 1. So it will always return n minus factorial. So it's an infinite loop. So I will do that here just to uh, 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 show you that it will not, so segmentation fault. It means that core dump, we have, uh, 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 so there's no memory left for us uh, because we run into an infinite loop. So. To correct this, I just need to place a zero here. So if I enter zero, so we know that zero factorial is equal to one. Now it works. Even one factorial is equal to one. Why? Because and one is not equal to zero. It will return one multiple factorial of zero and factorial of zero is equal to one. So one multiple one is equal to one. Let's check it for three again. So it will be equal to six. So this is the recursive uh, writing of the factorial function. So as you can see, the uh, if you can reach to write recursive functions, it's a very uh, uh, small in number of iterations and it's more easier to understand. But you need to have the practice to practice it and to uh, try it and to check what happens in the limit cases like we have done. So this is it for this exercise. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to write to me and I will answer you back. And again, thanks for watching.